In this video, we're just quickly deriving Bernoulli's equation, which is a statement about conservation of energy in fluids. So we're operating under some assumptions here. First, that there's no friction in the fluid. So with a real fluid, you would have some amount of drag at the walls of the pipe. And second, that there's no turbulence. So the reason we make these assumptions is so that we have no energy losses in the fluid as it moves through the container. And so what I've highlighted in the graph here is just a little blob of the fluid, and I want to track what happens to it as it moves from point one to point two. My claim here is that the total amount of energy in that blob is going to be the same at point one and point two, since there's no way to lose energy in this ideal fluid. So as we try to find an expression for the conservation of energy of this blob of fluid, we're looking at three different types of energy. And the first one I'll mention is actually the trickiest. It's the energy stored in the pressure of the fluid. So I made a video on pressure as energy density, and I'm just going to post a link back to that. But one way to look at the pressure in the fluid is that it's the energy per unit volume, in other words, energy density. And so if I wanted to get the energy in this blob, I could take the pressure and multiply by the volume. Writing that out real quick. And in that video, I explained that there has to be some kind of physical mechanism for where this energy is being stored. And so if this is a pipe full of water, then an area with higher pressure is actually going to have a, a microscopically larger compression of the water molecules. They're just going to be a little bit closer to each other. And the energy there is stored in the compression of those springy electrostatic interactions between water molecules. All right, the others here are more straightforward. I have gravitational potential and kinetic, which we're quite familiar with at this point. So Bernoulli's equation is simply saying that the energy in this blob must be the same as it travels from point one to point two. So I'm just going to write down E1 equals E2. Expanding the left-hand side. Again, you can find the energy due to pressure by taking pressure and multiplying by volume, which I call delta V here. Then I'll put in my kinetic term. I called the mass M momentarily. And there's my right-hand side. All the same terms. Okay, and there's just one more tricky thing to do here, and that is... I can express the mass of this blob of fluid as the density multiplied by the volume. And so at this point, every one of these terms has units of energy. There's pressure times volume, and then there's just our ordinary kinetic energy and gravitational potential energy. And I'm going to divide out both sides of the equation by delta V. Well, that means every single term is now going to have units of joules per meter cubed or energy density. So this is why I say that Bernoulli's equation is simply an expression of the conservation of energy density in a fluid. If you find the physics content on Zach's Lab helpful, click on the Zach's Lab logo on the right to browse playlists and subscribe to the channel. I produce over 100 new videos per month, and subscribing is the easiest way to find new content. Thanks for watching.